Now look, if you're looking for the best, most fun, middleweight naked motorcycle currently on the market, then it's a close one. I think if you were looking for a twin cylinder bike, I'd recommend the KTM. But if you wanted a triple, well, the Yamaha MT-09 is right up there with the Triumph Street triple. The thing is, Yamaha just announced a significant update for the new model year. And so the question is, is this now the best middleweight naked motorcycle that money can buy? Well, in this video, we'll go through all of the key changes to find out. Now, the big, most apparent update for me is with the styling and the previous generation, let's say, was a little bit polarizing. One thing was the projector LED headlight at the front, which was certainly a bold design choice. And while I quite like the super modern direction that they went in, naturally something this edgy isn't really going to be for everyone. Also, across the rest of the bike, they implemented what they called a coverless design. And so there's barely any bodywork except for around the fuel tank and some parts of the bike, like where the side panels would be or the tail section look very bare and minimal. And look, it was absolutely intentional, but again, not typical of the naked bike market. And I think for some people, it looked a little bit unfinished. This new bike though gets a complete redesign at the front end. And while it is still at the contemporary end of the design scale, I think it is a little more broadly palatable. They've reworked that LED projector so that it sits neatly towards the top of the headlight cluster. And then we've got two LED position lights with an aggressive look towards the bottom. Certainly has an element of superhero about it, but I'd love to know from you down in the comments below whether you think it's an improvement or not on the previous generation. The rest of the bike is now a little bit more filled out as well, specifically the tail section now does have some covers on it and it does look more substantial. And then there's also a new fuel tank design, which they say has been specifically designed to help the rider move freely around the bike. Personally, overall, I think it's a nice evolution that realistically is going to make the bike more appealing to more potential customers. The only slight shame for me is that they've lost that punchy orange color accent from the previous generation. And so now you've got three color choices. So Midnight Cyan, Icon Blue and Tech Black. I mean, they do look, to be fair, all pretty decent. And the signature blue and the stealthy black option are always going to be in the lineup. But I just think they all look fairly similar. And I would have liked to have seen one color that was a bit more vibrant and punchy. On the performance side, Side. Well, the engine is still the same, so it's their CP3 890cc inline triple. And look, for me, this is one of the best engines currently on the market, and so it didn't really need a massive update. Peak power comes in at 119 PS, which is pretty punchy. But I think what makes this bike so good to ride is the 93 newton meters of peak torque at 7,000 RPM. There's absolutely bags of mid range, lots of response from the throttle, and also a beautiful soundtrack along with it, and that smooth triple cylinder the feel. So as they say, why mess with a winning formula? The only possible tweak I can think of is that there might be some mild changes to the exhaust system because they now say it's compliant with the latest Euro 5 Plus emissions regulations. But the problem is with increasingly strict rules like this is that the sound level tends to get more and more compromised. Fortunately though, Yamaha came up with an innovative solution on last year's update to their MT-10 with a redesign to the airbox to accentuate high frequency sounds. On top of that, quite Literally, they have also fitted some acoustic amplifier grills to the top of the tank. And again, these vibrate in order to generate more induction sounds specifically around the rider. So for 2024, this concept has also been carried over to the MT-09, which is great. And it means that they can keep the exhaust system within the legal constraints, but also at the same time, deliver more of that visceral riding experience with more noise under acceleration for the rider. I've tested out that updated MT-10 and it definitely makes a beautiful beautiful sound. <laughs> And so I'm really looking forward to checking this one out because I absolutely love the sound of a triple. Now on the chassis front, some of the components have been carried over. So you've got the same aluminium frame and swing arm, the same lightweight spin forged wheels too. And while the suspension does get slightly revised settings for the new model year, it's still the same KYB fully adjustable fork and the KYB monoshock at the rear. Braking, however, should be slightly improved because it now gets a radial master cylinder courtesy of Brembo. 
Now this will typically mean a slightly crisper feel than a regular axially mounted lever, and so the rider should get more feedback and more progression than the previous generation. At the same time, they've also redesigned the clutch lever, again to offer a little bit more control. Another chassis update comes in the form of the tyres, and they say it's now shod with Bridgestone's Battleax Hypersport S23 M tyres, which they claim offer high levels of grip and light handling. Now to be fair, the previous gen came on their S22, so I wouldn't expect this to be a night and day transformation in terms of handling, but to be fair, every little evolution does help. Now, like I said, I've always thought this motorcycle has been thoroughly excellent, but one thing I'd always have to point out to anyone thinking about buying one was the slightly unusual handlebar position. On the previous generation, it's significantly higher than what you typically find on other middleweight naked bikes. So if you take the street triple from Triumph, for example, as a comparison, that feels a lot more tail up and lower at the front. The MT-09, on the other hand, was a lot more sat up and almost felt like an adventure bike handlebar position. Now, I wouldn't always say it's a bad thing. It did make it feel very practical and usable. But for anyone wanting a super sporty riding experience, it was certainly worth flagging up. So presumably this has come up in Yamaha's feedback elsewhere, because for this new 2024 model, they say they've moved the handlebar into a lower position. They also say they've made it adjustable between two positions, depending on your personal preference and physique. And so I'm expecting something that feels much more aggressive. And they also say the steering angle is slightly increased as a result of the lower profile fuel tank. So perhaps a little bit more nippy in the handling as well. Now again, on the ergonomics front, they've also decided to separate the rider and passenger seats into two distinct components. And they say they've done this to help with the rider's position, but also make it easier to get on and off the bike. On top of that, another benefit is that you've now got a little step between the two seats, and that helps to keep the rider in place under heavy acceleration. But it is worth adding that despite all these changes, the seat height does remain at the same 825 millimeters. Pretty much par for the course for a naked bike like this, and it should be fairly accessible to most riders. Now, another ergonomic tweak is that they've actually moved the footrests, and they've gone back by 30.6 millimeters, which is really quite significant, and also up a little bit by 9.5 millimeters. This, I reckon, combined with the new handlebar position, does sound like a much more sporty ride. You can see how with the seat as the pivot point, the rider triangle will be canted forward. And then, in addition to this, they've also made some tweaks to the foot control as well. So there's a new forged aluminium rear brake pedal, but also a shift pedal that's been flattened out to reduce the amount of ankle movement required to make a shift. Personally, I wouldn't say that was something I noticed as a problem on the previous generation, but perhaps now with that more forward riding position, it's a bit of a necessity to move it. Now onto the tech, and this is another huge area of improvement for 2024, because previously you had a 3.5 inch TFT display, which was totally fine, but just not particularly impressive versus some of the competition. Now they've swapped it out for a 5-inch display, which I think looks a lot more readable, and it also seems to have a nice graphical design to it too. Naturally, like most new bikes in 2024, it now comes with connectivity features as standard, and so that means you can pair the dash with your phone over Bluetooth, and also hook it up to a Bluetooth headset, and that means you can control calls and music through the switchgear and dash, but also hook it up to their app to get turn-by-turn -turn navigation features. Also, under the seat, you've now got a USB-C charger, and that means you can keep your phone juiced up for connectivity on those longer rides. Now, Yamaha kindly point out in the press release that a Bluetooth headset isn't included with this bike, so you'll need to source your own if you want to take advantage of some of these features. And so now seems like a good point at which to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, and that's Cardo. If you head to the link in the description, you'll find a discount code for some of their more popular units. And personally, I'd wholeheartedly recommend their flagship product the one that we always use here at Motobob, the PackTalk Edge. In my opinion, the best thing about it is their dynamic mesh communication system, which allows you to pair up to 15 riders at once with a mile between each. And the cool thing is that the more riders that join, the stronger the network. And also, if a rider drops off the group and then catches back up, the DMC system will automatically heal, so there's no need to pull over and manually pair and sort it out again. Then on top of that, you've got top-notch audio from the JBL Design 
speakers. And for me, one of the most crucial features is the brilliant noise gating, which means you don't get any distracting wind noise from any other rider's microphone. I absolutely love mine, so I'd fully recommend picking one up. So do head to the link down in the description to get yours. And like I say, you'll find that discount code down there as well. And so once again, a massive thanks to Cardo for their support. Now, I just mentioned the switch gear, and that's had a significant update too, in order to accommodate all of this new functionality. Yamaha claimed that they now feature a clear, logical, and simple design, and so I look forward to testing those out when we get one to review. Now, it's the previous generation that got a substantial update in 2021, and it included all of the lean-sensitive rider aids powered by a six-axis inertial measurement unit that basically tripled down from their R1 Superbike. So that meant cornering traction control and ABS, slide control and wheelie control. But new for 2024, we've got three riding modes of sport, street and rain, and two custom slots that allow you to dial in the settings to your exact preference. What I like about this new system is that you can make these changes not only through the switch gear and dash, but also through the smartphone connection if you get the My Ride app. On top of that, you've now got backslip regulator as one of the rider aids. And so that means that the bike will prevent rear wheel lockups under heavy engine braking by controlling the amount of back torque. Now, whilst the existing slipper clutch will do this in certain scenarios, they claim the BSR is more nuanced and able to operate in lower grip circumstances. Now, this next one might sound like a minor tweak, but I think it's one of those things that can really hit a nerve with you guys. And that's that it now comes with cruise control as standard for 2024. Some riders can take it or leave it and barely ever use their bikes on the motorway. But I think the bikers who do want cruise control on their bikes find it non-negotiable. And I think it can be difficult to understand why it isn't fitted on more bikes, given that nearly all new bikes now come with a ride by wire throttle. Previously, this was a feature fitted to the NT09 SP, which is the slightly more expensive and slightly more premium spec version of this bike. And so it's great to see it now as standard on this base model. Rounding off the techie tweaks, you've now got self-canceling indicators, which again, I'd like to see on more bikes now. It doesn't seem particularly complex to implement, but it's obviously a great safety feature. And the same could be said for the new emergency stop signal function, which flashes the hazards under heavy braking. Rear end shunts are fairly common and obviously very dangerous. And so anything to reduce the chances is a good thing in my book. On top of that, the quick shifter has been updated now in its third generation. And the key change here seems to be that it now doesn't operate in extremely low or high RPM situations, nor when the engine is running at a constant speed, so neither in acceleration or deceleration. They say on the dash, you'll now see an indication as to whether the quick shifter can be used or not, although I think realistically most riders will learn to do this on feel. Bikes are expected in dealers from spring 2024, and the price is yet to be announced, but apparently coming in the next few weeks. Hopefully it's not too much more than the £9,810 of the 2023 model because the aggressive pricing is really one of the standout features of the MT-09. There are very few bikes in my opinion that can offer such good value for money in terms of fun and thrills on the road for under 10 grand. And by the way, no word on an updated SP version yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it follows in the next few months. And typically that'll come with a couple of extra techie enhancements, but the big one is usually the top spec Olin suspension. As always, I'd love to know what you think of this bike, so do let me know down in the comments below. And do you think there's a better way to spend 10 grand on a motorcycle? Or is this MT-09, especially with these new updates, top of the tree at that price point? Let me know what you think, and if you want to see more of the latest motorcycle news like this right here on YouTube, then do hit subscribe if you've not already. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you in the next video.